Hello! Welcome to another Ready Game Roll video. Take three of this. <laughs> uh, today is Star Wars Day. Best of best day of the year. Fight me. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd record something Star related. And unfortunately I do not have anything Star Wars, but I do have Star Grave. Um, and it's a it's a great game that I think more people should know about. So Stargrave, for you know the Cliff Notes, is a game by Joseph A. McCullough and published by Osprey Games. Is a miniature agnostic uh, skirmish scale game. So if those things sound interesting to you, or maybe you don't know what any of those words mean, stick around because we're going to be talking about that. And if you like the sound of that for whatever reason, because it's cool, that's why, that's the reason, maybe click some of these buttons. There's a weird thumb, thumbs up thingy here-ish, and a subscription button around here, depending on whether you're on desktop or mobile, I guess. But once you've done those, we can continue the video. Uh, now you've done that, that's nice, thank you. That's given me a nice little nice little dopamine rush. Thank you for a couple minutes. Anyway, Stargrave is a industry agnostic uh, sci-fi, as you can probably tell, skirmish game that was published in 2021 by Osprey Games, who publish a lot of other really cool independent uh, games, both war games, skirmish games, couple RPGs, but they publish a lot of really good stuff. I really like what they do. And this, this comes off the back of the incredibly popular um, Frostgrave, which is this, but fantasy. <laughs> um, so the gist of Stargrave is to create a a warband or a in this game a crew of ten miniatures, um, and hunt for loot, do missions. It is very much your a, a great game if you're wanting to play games that fit that sort of Han Solo bounty hunter sort of vibe, or maybe you know get the feel for shows like Firefly or Cowboy Bebop, creating a crew, doing doing jobs and missions and things like that, killing bad guys and getting loot. That is effectively the crux of the game. It uses a D20 system, which is great because most most people in this hobby at this point have at least a couple D20s in their inventory. And if not you know, there's always Google and other apps and things like that. But yeah, Frostgrave is awesome because not Frostgrave. This is Stargrave. I will I will probably look at Frostgrave at some point because yeah, it's still good. It's just fantasy and <laughs> I prefer sci fi. So Stargrave is set in a universe that follows some sort of big galactic war. And now adventurers, um, adventuring parties and crews of daring spaceships are going out to sort of fill in the gaps, uh, make some money where money is to be made. So this book is... Uh, plus all the appendices and stuff. Well, not plus. It is 161 pages, plus a lot of stuff that you can photocopy and then cut out, including, interestingly, your blast templates and teardrop templates, which is nice to see a game that uses those. Um, yeah. So to create a crew, what you'll need, like I say, is 10 minis. 
Uh, as the, the phrase miniature agnostic suggests, if you are not aware, miniature agnostic just means that you can use whatever minis you want. Anything, really. You could just just use dice if you're you're lacking for minis. Um and no one no one will, will tell you otherwise because that's not how how things are in the world of miniature agnostic games as I try and readjust the camera just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, which I love. I love that about games like this, where you can just go, here's some dice, let's roll some dice. Here's here's some minis, let's roll some dice. I just nowadays that is my preferred type of game, rather than getting bogged down with rules about, you know, too heavily bogged down with rules about cover and things like that. Um, there's some there's some things I like in games like Warhammer and Infinity, and a lot that I don't. But anyway, to assemble a crew, you will need 10 minis, or if you are playing a co-op game, you will each have 5 minis each. Um, and instead of having a captain and a first mate, each player will just have a first mate. That's getting into the weeds more than it is necessary as usual, Scott. Anyway, creating a captain is much like creating a character for a, a TTRPG. Give them a name, assign their stats, assign their gear, you know, things like that. It's all, it's all very, very simple. Um, a lot of this book is that like, Joseph know how, knows how to, to write rules in a way that is fairly understandable. And in the cases where you might not understand, there are plenty of Facebook groups and Discord servers and um, Reddits. I don't... I'm sure it's just called Reddits. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of online resources where you can just ask questions. And the Stargrave community, I think most of the like miniature agnostic indie style skirmish games community are lovely folks. And yeah, most of most of the tabletop gaming hobby community is lovely anyway, but especially folks that play these sorts of games i have had no bad interactions with at all genuinely and that's not something i can really say about games like warhammer um and for a while i thought infinity had a solid community and it, it does don't get me wrong most most people in the infinity community are lovely lovely people but you know, and I'm, I'm sure there are bad eggs in this sort of community too. It's just I haven't experienced them yet. Hopefully never. Anyway, creating a cap captain is fairly simple. Um, just choosing a you know couple couple stats, choosing the uh, background. There are loads of backgrounds. So here you've got biomorph. I think that is. Yes, cyborgs, mystics. So a lot of these will fit into your classic sci-fi archetypes. So mystics are just easy. If you've got if you've got Star Wars Legion minis, so you've got a Luke Skywalker or Anakin Skywalker or something like that knocking around, and you want to create a character for Stargrave that uses that mini. Boom, there's your mystic. Um, robotics expert, you know, your, your sciencey types. <laughs> um, but yeah, you've got loads and loads of different character types, backgrounds to you to choose from. And in other books, there are even more. So I think there are a couple in Quarantine 37 and a couple more in other books elsewhere. And then you do the same thing as you did with your captain with a for your first mate, except in Stargrave, your um I think it was your main wizard and your apprentice, they both had to be in the same school of magic. 
In this, you can go completely different backgrounds if you want to. You can have a veteran captain and a mystic first mate or what have you, which is great. I think that, that adds a little bit more fun and flexibility. And then obviously you create eight um, basic soldiers, which you know are going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Um, you know, so again, there's there's lots of tables and things for for reference, which is good. And I I do want to touch on the art. The art is astonishing. Like it's a nice mix of very sort of modern gritty sci-fi like stuff like this and earlier pieces with some stuff that's a little bit more pulpy like I, this is a little bit and then the super pulpy uh style of the uh official tie-in miniatures that are made by north star military figures and they they're oh, i love them they're so so good but yeah it's a real. It's quite a simple game, um, not least because a lot of a lot of this is images. I think my main criticism of the game is things like combat. Could maybe do with a couple, a couple more, at least for me, clear images. Now, some people, some people might think this is plenty clear. This is fine. I, I'm I'm going to put my hands up and, and say it took me a little bit. Not too long. Not too long. But it took me a little bit of, of time reading through to go, oh, that's what they mean. And that is one thing that I will, I will say about some of these indie games where they're not going, they're not going to be going through their, they're all set with a fine tooth comb. And for me, that's perfectly fine. That's fine. I don't, I don't mind, because I think you get to a point with games like Warhammer, uh, 40k, and Kill Team, where everything, every rule has to be hyper explained, or else some asshole's going to to find a way to bend it and use it in a way that wasn't intended. And that's that sort of thing can and often does happen in games like this, but because this is more of a, I guess, beer and pretzels game is a, a word that I hear floating around with games like this. I don't know why you'd have beer and pretzels. I don't like beer that much, and pretzels make my mouth dry. Um, you know, so yeah. A, a a game it's a game for a light snack and a good time, which is why I like it, rather than getting super serious with you know, all your dice and rules and stratagems. I've I've made my point on this channel a couple of times how much I despise stratagems. Anyway, good book. Um comes with a lot of tables because it's kind of old school that way. And a lot of these Osprey games come with a lot of fun little tables to use. Um, get plenty of equipment, lots and lots of equipment. Thing on buying your items, which is nice. And here's a whole section on the powers you can take, because different classes will have different powers. Um, not all of them are, are going to be all psychic, force lightning and shit. Some of it is just as simple as being able to hack and use drones and shit like that. So it's it's not you know. So you can you can play fairly hard sci-fi type games with this system. Um, but for me, for me, with this system, it's it's more fun to really lean into the silly. Um, which is why some of my Stargrave minis are Space Cowboys, like straight-up Firefly-inspired Space Cowboys. Um, here's something that... Strong, strong Destiny vibes with that, which is why I love that piece of art. 
Um, and as with most cases with games like this, the back chunk of the book is scenarios. So different missions you can do, um, including a bestiary and creature lists. So you're, you're going to have plenty of creatures to, to mess around with and turn into fancy, fancy hats. So yeah, that is Stargrave. One of my favourite games that I do not get to the table nearly enough. Which sucks. But at the same time, I have no excuse. I, I literally have right, right here, underneath Harrowdeep, Cursed City, and more stuff is the terrain for... Um, into the dark so i could easily i could easily use that sort of stuff so yeah stargrave good game i highly 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 recommend especially if you're just starting to get into tabletop games because as i said at the beginning you don't have to worry about buying super expensive minis the minis that uh, are sort of official tie-in minis these these guys cost 20 quid for a box of 20 which is when you when you look at the cost of games workshop minis you know where it's 30 40 quid sometimes for three minutes um yeah this is ridiculous i love it and they're so modular they're great for for conversions and kit bashing because like i say my here is my unfinished, I will admit, captain for my sort of world westy uh, Stargrave crew. Kind of, I've had a lot of people say it gives them Fallout New Vegas vibes. And I can really, really see that now. I didn't see it until someone pointed it out to me. But now I see it. Now I see it and I can't unsee it. Which is cool. That's kind of the fun thing about painting and miniatures. I don't know why I painted the backpack bright blue. I guess I wanted a, just a pop of colour. Anyway, yeah. I mean, miniature agnostic games are great, because you can just, especially if you've got a 3D printer like me, you can just pop things out like this. This is a mini from a company called Papsicles. This is totally, totally, definitely not David from uh, cyberpunk edge runners please please don't sue <laughs> um so yeah you can really mix and match what minis you bring to the table with games like this sometimes the scale of them is a little bit off especially if you're doing using different size bases but at like six four to six feet away you're not going to notice that too much so that doesn't matter and if you're wondering what's going on with the base on this lad, I'm about to make a TikTok video type thing, or a short, explaining what that is. So, again, do subscribe, because, yeah, we're making videos on tabletop stuff again. I say again. It's, it's nice to be, you know, making videos fairly regularly, because we weren't doing that for a good while. So yeah, thank you for for watching them. And yeah, have a have a nice day. Just have a nice day. It's a wonderful sunny day in England. Yeah, which is nice. So go outside, go for a walk. Do something. Anyway, I will catch you on the next video. See ya.